Hello, I'm Tom Beeman. This is Inside the Summit League. A lot of soccer coming up this week, including the best keeper in the country right now. He has the longest shutout streak anyway, and the most creative quaff. We'll hear from Yves Dietrich at Western Illinois. And get a little feel on the floor with South Dakota State basketball coach Aaron Johnston as the Jackrabbits start practice and prepare to defend their Summit League regular season title. Start with volleyball this week, though it's getting good. Denver and South Dakota are rising to the top as the Summit League season gets going full swing. Start with Denver at home on Friday against North Dakota State. Emily Myron is having a fine season so far for NDSU. 12 kills in this one for the 6'2 sophomore. And North Dakota State pushes Denver to five sets in this match. Denver got a big match from Moni Porajedo couple of blocks and a team high 15 kills for her and then a big hammer from Erica Denny and Denver wins the first set NDSU wins the second Denver gets the third NDSU takes the fourth both teams just banging away in the middle of the net uh, for the entire match 13 kills for number 13 Ruth Okoye for Denver North Dakota State led the fifth set 11 to 7 but Denver comes back and they win the match 15 13 in that final set We've done that a couple times this season. Um, you know, there's there's matches that I felt like uh, we just found a way, uh, willed ourselves to the win, um, and we did that there. I mean, we dug ourselves a hole uh, in the fifth set and came back and made some really good plays um, at the right times and, and found a way to win. Well, that win got Denver to 5-0 and in league play. South Dakota had won its 14th straight home match on Friday. The Coyotes beat Western Illinois. So USD at 6-0 in the league, coming into this clash with unbeaten Denver on Sunday. And Brittany Jessen had a triple-double for USD. 10 kills, 41 assists, and 13 digs for Jessen and the Coyotes. But look at the ups again by Moni Corajedo for Denver. She had 20 kills and hit 354 for the match. Very close match in the first three sets. Denver does take the fourth uh, handily, 25 to 16, to take the match three to one. It's the 12th straight win for Denver, and they are the only unbeaten left now in the league at six and zero. Well, meanwhile, the Jaguars are still the defending regular season champs in the Summit League, and they are the defending tournament champions as well. IUPUI hosting South Dakota State on Friday. Tiara Gibson led the Jackrabbits with eight kills. But the Jags have Caitlin Hickey rising up on the outside. She led everybody with 18 kills and hit 359 for the match. The Jags keep firing away. Six foot three Logan Walling had 11 kills on 19 attacks, and IUPUI wins in three, 27 25 in the third set. Well, another week and another big week for Emily Spencer at Fort Wayne. The Dons taking on Oral Roberts on Friday. Uh, that, though, is Shelby Cox for Oral Roberts. She had 11 kills in the match. Here is Spencer, though. She had a match-high 25 kills and the start of another big weekend for her. Sarah Pope led Oral Roberts with 14 kills, and they played uh, four very close sets in the match, none of them decided by more than three points. Summer Johnson adds 10 kills for Fort Wayne, and the Dons win three sets by a total of seven points, and they win the match 3-1. to one. Well, Fort Wayne keeps it rolling at Omaha on Sunday, but they have to go five sets to do it. The dump by Sydney O'Shaughnessy. She had 26 assists for Omaha, and the Mavs win the second and the third sets. Michaela Shimmer puts that one away for Omaha. But Fort Wayne rallies to win the fourth and the fifth. Spencer with 21 kills, and that is 40 straight matches now that she has had at least 10 kills for Fort Wayne. And the Dons come back and beat Omaha in the match three to two. And last, but one of the best matches of the weekend in Macomb, Western Illinois and South Dakota State. Tara Gibson again leading the way for the Jackrabbits. She had nine kills, but SDSU hit just 116 as a team. Look at the dig by Alana Pengilly for the Jackrabbits. But Western still gets the point on a block assist by Melanie Miller. Western wins the first set 28-26, and the Jackrabbits keep it close throughout. Gibson on another quick kill for SDSU. But Ann Miller had 23 kills on 49 total attacks for the Leathernecks. Western wins in three, and a good comeback for them after losing their last two matches. 
you know, we just stopped focusing on not winning and started focusing on what we need to do well in a match to succeed. And I think that's what kind of pushed us through the entire match tonight, you know, and, you know, they weren't so focused on, oh, my God, we just lost that point. It was more like, give me the next ball. Soccer coming up next, including an incredible shutout streak for the keeper and his cohorts at Western Illinois. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort and Dakota Land Honda. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Health and your Heartland Chevy dealers. Welcome back. Well, Eves Dietrich not only has the coolest hair and the biggest beard in the league right now, he also has the longest shutout streak in Division I men's soccer. It's awesome. It's uh, my personal best two of five games without giving up a goal. It's amazing. I mean, it feels really good after each game. It's just such a relief, like winning and not giving up a goal. I mean, it's a, a goalie's dream. I think the whole team got better defensively. Like at the beginning of the season, you can see in the stats, I had to make more saves than I had to do actually in the last couple of games. And so the whole team developed and we got a lot better and the communication is better. Um, we got into a rhythm. I mean, we won the last five games, got five shoutouts. Uh, big shout out to my uh, back line. Defensively, we played well and didn't allow a lot of chances for the uh, opposing teams. Well, Dietrich Zagen de Varheit, he is telling the truth. Western Illinois has not given up a goal in almost a month. September 19th was the last time they did, and the stonewalling continued against Omaha on Sunday, although the Mavericks came really close on that cross by Logan Mendez. But the Leathernecks get the only goal of the match right here. Austin Gochner with his second of the season and assist to Charlie Bales. And that goal was only nine minutes into the match and the Western Illinois defense makes it hold up. Dietrich punching that over the top in the first half and then bodies, defenders flying all over the place in front of the Western net in the second half. And that is five straight shutout wins now for Western Illinois. They are off to a 2-0 start in league play. Hats off to Omaha, they made, they made a game out of it, they didn't quit, it's a pretty good side, but uh, defensively I thought we were solid again, Bales and Bloom and Fittis and uh, Bjornsson had great games and he, he made the two saves that he had to make, so uh, great win for us in conference and 2-0 uh, was good. In women's soccer, North Dakota State has not had a tie in women's soccer since 2011 and then they had two of them over the weekend. The Bison were at Omaha on Friday, and the Mavericks on a penalty kick. Hannah Wampler makes good. one to nothing Omaha in the 29th minute. It was one to nothing at the end of the first half, and it was one to nothing Omaha until the 80th minute when Amy Yang slips that through for North Dakota State, and this match ends in a 1-1 draw. Well, that was the second tie in the league already for Omaha. The Mavericks are 1-0 and 2. Back to North Dakota State, though. Uh, they took their first draw in that last uh, match, and this was their second at South Dakota on Sunday. Four goals in this match, all of them in the first half. Elena Sakakis for the Coyotes makes it one to nothing USD. North Dakota State got goals from Gabby Arnquist and Anisha Kinnerath to take a 2-1 to -one lead, but Colleen Reeves gets the equalizer for the Coyotes just before the half. And USD had a couple of good chances to gain the lead after that, but Sierra Bonham keeps them out, and this one ends in a 2-2 tie in Vermillion. Well, meanwhile, everybody is chasing South Dakota State. The Jackrabbits beat Oral Roberts on Sunday, and South Dakota State was trying to keep a long home winning streak going. Helen Erb made a ten, uh, excuse me, six tough saves for Oral Roberts. But the Rabbits get through her in the 26th minute of the match. Diana Potterveld ahead to Shelby Raper, and that is the fifth goal of the season for Raper. Jack, uh, Jack lead it one to nothing. Potterveld had a player of the week-like performance flying up the side, and then she stops and spins and sets up Nicole Hatcher, and that is the first collegiate goal for Hatcher. Jackrabbits lead it two to nothing early in the second half. Potterveld adds a goal to go with her two assists, and the Jackrabbits now have won 23 straight regular season home matches in Summit League play. They have not lost one at home since 2009, and this was the 100th career win in Division I for SDSU head coach Lang Wiedemeyer. He got the game ball, 
tried to avoid getting the Gatorade shower because it was freezing out there. But they get him anyway. Congratulations, Coach. And he could still talk afterwards. It was a tough trip, tra traveling all the way to Fort Wayne and coming back and having to play. Uh, we had the longest travel of anybody in the conference this weekend, so for our girls to come out and play the way they did today was impressive. Well, we've got soccer and golf and cross country and volleyball all going on right now, and Summit League swimming and diving teams are getting their fall season started. Western Illinois had the home pool against St. Louis over the weekend. Melanie Pearson won the one-meter dive competition, and her bio says that she is a Green Bay Packers fan, so it was a good weekend for her. On the three-meter board for Western Illinois, Victor Rusinas. He wins this event with a personal best score. Chris Navale of Western Illinois broke his own pool record in the 100 fly with a time of 50.82 seconds. And that's what Western Illinois does. The Leathernecks set one women's school record and 10 men's school records last season. And the Leathernecks might be on pace to take a shot at breaking some of those this year. Interval-wise, as we go through practice on a regular basis, we're actually training faster at this point in time than we did a year ago. Um, and we're actually probably training fewer yards, but we've got a lot more uh, strength aspect to our program at this point in time. So they're definitely having fun with uh, us trying to elevate what we're doing training-wise so that we can actually try and repeat uh, on the success that we had last year with all the broken school records. Meanwhile, the South Dakota women were at home in a duel with Minnesota State Mankato. The Coyotes won 11 of the 16 events in their season opener at the Dakota Dome. Sam Shutt won the 100 freestyle, the 200 freestyle, and the 400 freestyle. She was an all-Summit League performer last year as a freshman. Grayson Herting is the Summit League Diver of the Week. She won both the three-meter and the one-meter competitions. And the Yotes men and women are looking to move up from the middle of the pack where they finished last year in the Summit League Championships. Probably the best in shape we've looked this early in the season. Uh, the guys that did the work this summer look really, really good. And the kids that uh, maybe took a little time off this summer still got some work to do. But uh, at this point in the season, I'm pretty happy with where we're at. Basketball coming up after the break. We will tag along with the three-time defending league champions from South Dakota State. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort and Dakota Land Honda. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Health and your Heartland Chevy dealers. Well, more than 100 Summit League basketball games will be on national or regional TV this season. The league has struck a deal with ESPN3 to carry more than 60 games. Midco Sports Network, Hometown Sports in Indianapolis, Root Sports, NBC North Dakota, and Oral Roberts University will produce the games and supply the broadcast to ESPN3 during the season. The whole package includes 15 women's regular season games. So who's going to be good? South Dakota State is the media pick to win the league's regular season title for the fourth year in a row. Here's a peek at the Jackrabbits as they get their practice underway. First practice of the year. They don't feel like first practices as much as they used to because we can do the five on five workouts, you know, and all those other things. So I know it's still the first practice of the year. You're all excited. It'll be good. But keep in mind, it's just an extension of what we've been working on. All right, let's go. Bring it in. Have a good day. What do you think? Good. I want you down here as you're walking. Listen up. We're going to put you in your three teams right away. Turnover. Rotate. Get up on the lane, China. It's fun to get out there on the floor. You know, we, uh, we've been working out since this summer. Our season now is just so different. And so really what we were doing was just an extension of what we've been building on from June into July, September to now. So there wasn't any big surprises. There wasn't anything that was a, a, a big brand new idea we tried to get done. We just tried to build on what we've been working on. But just so much fun to have everybody out there together and have a, a group energy and kind of a group focus. It's fun to get that part of it going. Some of us gotta get better at this. Some of us gotta get better. Some of us gotta get better. Gotta get better. Good, Kaden, good. This is gonna be a real, hopefully, stable year because we don't have a lot of changes. We returned Mike, Katie, and, and uh, Carissa on staff. We added a new director of operations in Haley. Alex Feeney's back, so we got a great group. The seniors are excellent. They've been here a long time. They know what our expectations are, our standards are, in addition to that group. Super freshmen that should be able to help us contribute. 
and kind of in the middle there, some, some great returners as well. So I, I really don't expect a lot of big surprises what we do. We've got a lot of good people back, a lot of good ideas. Just a matter of trying to be a little bit better with them. So you've got to have some awareness on the court as to where the elbow is and where the block is. And how you guard the ball should prevent her from driving straight there. All right, get yourself going. You have about six minutes. Let's go. <clears throat> I thought our off season was excellent. You know, you, you never know until you get into January. You can look back and say, oh boy, we need to put more time into this or that. But looking at where we are right now on day one, I couldn't be happier with how players improved. We have a lot of players that were, you know, at a spot and now they're better in that spot because of the work they put in. Our coaches, I thought, had a real good plan for each player this summer and gave some individual ideas that really helped. And I thought there was a lot of improvement. Hopefully that shows up on the court. As far as goals, I, I think we just hope to take another step forward. And, and for a lot of teams, that means moving up the conference ranks or competing for a championship. Those are things we've done. So for us, moving forward means moving our program forward. Maybe we move up in terms of our attendance and our fan support. We need to find ways to win a few more games for RPI, possibly get into an NCAA tournament and move forward in an NCAA tournament. They're really big, big ideas, and they're easy to measure if we've done them or not, but they're very, very difficult to do because we're competing against so many good teams for those big ideas. Some of your careers go by quick, and so this six weeks gives us plenty of time to do what we need to, but the six weeks is important to get us going in the right direction because the games will be here before you know it. Yes. What do you think? Yes. The Jacks jump in with their first exhibition game coming up already on October 30th. We will take you to Fort Wayne when we come back, where art and bikes and mastodons all come together in the campus spotlight. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort and Dakota Land Honda. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Health and your Heartland Chevy dealers. Welcome back. Well, IPFW turns 50 years old this year. Here's how they are celebrating a half century in Fort Wayne in the campus spotlight. IPFW is celebrating its 50th anniversary year during the 2014-15 academic year. A year-long schedule of activities opened with a kickoff celebration on September 15th. We just had our on-campus celebration where we had a couple of thousand of individuals show up, students, faculty, community members, state elected officials, and Mayor Tom Henry celebrated with us by announcing IPFW's 50th anniversary day during the event. We have a large number of events planned on campus from everything from um, our faculty emeriti that will be returning to five theater productions to lectures and um, student events that will be taking place on campus, all over campus during the year-long celebration. But IPFW didn't want to limit the celebration just to campus. It wanted to share its rich history by involving the city of Fort Wayne. We started looking at ways to celebrate IPFW's 50th anniversary three years ago. We started this process and there was also a push for public art at that time. And so what we decided to do was create bike racks that also were art. So we came up with sculpture with purpose. There are 13 sculptures on the university's campus and recently the city of Fort Wayne and IPFW were just honored with an International Association Merit Award. There are 50 sculptures that have been placed all over the Fort Wayne or Allen County area. We have 34 downtown and then the remainder are kind of spread out throughout the Fort Wayne community. We felt it was very important to have a critical mass downtown so that people wouldn't just be driving around and see a random piece of art and not really know what it was. And now we have so many downtown that people can't help but notice that they are together. We put out a national call for proposals from artists and we actually had a bike enthusiast, artists, the head of our museum in Fort Wayne as well and several art enthusiasts came together as well as the city to look at the pieces from perspective of aesthetics, function, stability and structure. IPFW is a regional school, a regional campus where 85 to 90 percent of the students that attend IPFW, that matriculate here, that I like to say live, work and study on campus, they come from Northeast Indiana. And so it is not only just part of the Fort Wayne community, but it's part of the larger regional community as well. Each sculptural bike rack includes a sign at its base, identifying it as part of the 50th Celebration's Sculpture with Purpose project. 
The sign also includes a QR code, leading to more information about the artist and the artwork itself. For a full map of all 50 sculptures, go to sculpturewithpurpose.com. And for more information about the 50th celebration, visit celebrate.ipfw.edu. Thanks to everybody in Fort Wayne. We've got Player of the Week honors when we come back. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort and Dakota Land Honda. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Health and your Heartland Chevy dealers. Here are your Summit League Players of the Week starting in volleyball. Two of them from IUPUI, both for the first time in their careers. Caitlin Hickey had 18 kills in a sweep of South Dakota State. Alexis Mapes, a career-high 17 digs in that win as well. And Melissa Fertko of South Dakota, 14 blocks at 18 kills in two matches for the Coyotes. Women's soccer, Potterville from South Dakota State, two goals and three assists in a win and a draw for the Jackrabbits. And Katherine Schmidt from IEPUI, 12 saves in two wins over Denver and Fort Wayne. And men's soccer, they couldn't make up their mind. Four of them this week, Corey Tom from Fort Wayne, Charlie Bales from Western Illinois, another game winner for him on the offensive side and defensively. Rafael Kotsik of Fort Wayne and Eves Dietrich of Western Illinois, nine more saves. Uh, to run his shutout streak to 450 minutes. Thanks to all our member schools. See you next week on Inside the Summit League.